it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part six of my giant Hulkbuster suit in progress. So in the last part, we put the latches on that hold this upright when there's no one in it, which are released with these cables. Um, it's four cables that release the latches and also let me get my feet out when I'm standing in it because I can't reach them to undo the straps. Um, this time I said I was going to work on the arms, so basically building the frame like this for each arm, which is going to be controlled, um, the upper arms, by my real arms, uh, me mechatronic from the elbows down, so they're going to be controlled with joysticks for all of the hand functions and the elbows. The only challenge is with building the arms that I haven't designed the shells for the suit yet, so I don't know exactly where to place them. So they're going to be oversized, but how far away from the suit should they be? Um, obviously there'll be massive shoulder bells on them, but generally I don't know how big to make them, I don't know where to put them or how to hang them. So um, I should stress that this is only the frame for the suit, the whole thing is going to be covered in shells which open up and allow you to climb in uh, from the back, although some of the front ones will open as well for show, and there'll be another layer inside of fake mechanics like pistons and that sort of thing. So we need to find a solution so we know how to put the arms on, and we probably need to start at, uh, planning the body to see how the arms interact with it, because they need to move around quite a bit. So obviously we need to have um, a chest plate and that sort of thing. So I've been considering some of the other mechanics and I got a bit carried away. I found this dome, which is a CCTV dome, which is one of these indestructible plastic ones you can throw bricks at. And I was thinking that'd be very good for a unibeam arc reactor type of assembly. And I was about to go and do some 3D printing and put some fake mechanics on there. And then I realized as well, I don't really know how far away that needs to go or what its exact position is. So I think what we need to do really is mock up some shells for this out of a temporary material so that we can size things, we can work out where the arms need to be and then we can go back and we can make those out of a more permanent material once we've messed around with it. So to plan the size of these things we need to be able to quickly make something so I'm going to use all of these cardboard boxes and I've got plenty more and lots of tape so we're just going to basically manually put together something so we can size it. Another really good way to plan sections that you're going to make out of sheet material is to use normal kitchen foil. So if we um, take a bit of this, you know, basically kitchen foil you can kind of crease into shape. So you can uh, get this and make a curved piece. And you can kind of trim the edges and crease it up and make it how you want it. So, I don't know, say we're doing a bicep piece, we can kind of shape this. Um, either fold it or cut the edges and we can make I don't know, a custom piece of armour of some sort and kind of size it up and have all various contours in it so it's rounded and we can roughly work out what the shape of things need to be and um, we can either cover that in duct tape or something and just make a pattern basically so you know I can try that on for size now and see if that fits me for whichever piece it was I was making or if it fits the suit I'm making um, and then we can either go and make a vacuum form, mould the same shape, or we can try and draw in CAD and 3D print it. Or we can um, go and flatten that completely, cut it out of some sheet material like foam or um, Sintra, one of those foam PVC boards. Um, and then perhaps bend that piece of foam PVC board back into the same shape with heat. But basically it makes a really easy, quick template method. So we can plan some of those complicated curve shapes. So it's quite hard to visualise exactly what this looks like with a person in, because I'm putting the pieces on when I'm not in it, so... I've got my mannequin ready to, uh, Model the wearer. If I can get him in. bit shorter than I am so his shoulders don't quite go in there and of course when I get in I have to lift this assembly up. Um, his crotch however is at the right height because his legs are far too long because he's not anatomically correct. Um, so I should be able to work out roughly uh, what to do with this section. So I've just been experimenting with some shapes here, the first prototype pieces. Um, 
So we've got the uh, uni beam thing there. Obviously this is just cardboard. As I said before, it is temporary. It's just to sort of do like a 3D sketch pad really, to kind of develop the shapes for the body, see how it all fits together. So I'm gonna try and put the cod plate on and then try and see where the abs go and how the body can be built up and then how far away this needs to go. So I'm just mounting these temporary pieces up with blocks of foam stuck onto the wood there with a bit of hot glue, just so I can kind of visualize how the pieces mount. Um, the final pieces, of course, as well as not being made of cardboard, uh, will have 3D printed brackets screwed onto this, which will then have the pieces properly mounted on it. And I've got gaps in between them so I can have lights and things that shine through. Um, I really like these pieces to be able to open so you can kind of see inside one way or the other. So you can see the person getting in and then when all of the rest of the panels shut, they'll shut again. So the emphasis is on kind of having lots of small pieces that I can potentially hinge eventually. And obviously with 3D printed brackets, that'll be much easier. So I'm just working on the cod plate piece there. Um, that's just gonna be temporarily fixed on with a piece of foam. And I've just put some conduit in there just to remind myself to add details to the final version. Perhaps that's water recycling or something like that. It seems to look quite good anyway in place. So this is what we've got so far. I've got um, some sort of makeshift thighs on here so I can kind of size how these are gonna go round and how far the arms need to go. I'm not quite convinced about this. It's looking a bit like um, a port hole out of a submarine or something. I've actually got some smaller domes in various sizes. I think at least that needs to be recessed. So maybe the hole is the same size, but the actual dome sits back a bit. Um, and pokes out, or maybe the hole is smaller so you can only see the front of the dome. Um, I think also these pieces need to come forward and this plate needs to go back. Um, also bringing these forward slightly so that they come nearer the thighs. Of course this body lifts up so the cod plate won't be quite as close to the thighs. Um, but I'm sort of starting to work out the angles and things for the pieces that go over the shoulders. Um, the frame was modelled with a big box on the back, which is kind of characteristic of most Hulkbusters that you see if you go and Google Google Images or you look at the comic ones. Um, so on the whole, I think the frame is kind of okay. Um, I'm going to try and model an arm next and we'll see where that gets placed. So I've just mocked up this arm. It's a bit boxy, but it's just there for scale really. I'm not sure if the shoulder bell is too big or whether I like it big. Um, it's just made of a couple of boxy shoved together to get some idea of scale. Um, it would probably be completely different to that and also made of lots of smaller sections. Um, I've messed around with the chest a bit here, put the smaller dome in to see what that would look like and change some of the angles. Still not 100% convinced. Um, and I put some conduit here as well to remind me um, to put conduits running down into the legs from the body. Um, I'm probably going to use something like vacuum cleaner hose. You can get a three metre hose on eBay for about five quid. Um, so some really big hoses running down. Um, what I really like is some pistons that um, go from this piece, which is why it's there, into the body and also up to the arm and um, probably some more running within here somewhere, perhaps in this direction. Um, obviously all just for show, so those are going to be fake, made out of incredibly lightweight material like foam. In fact, I'm probably going to use water noodles with 3D printed ends on, which are those uh, polyethylene foam things you get for messing around in swimming pools. Um, so in terms of the lower arm, that's going to hinge somewhere higher up. So the wearer's hand is actually right in the bottom here. And the reason for that is so that you can operate a joystick. So I've got hold of one of these, which is a classic um, digital joystick. In fact, for a Commodore 64 or an Atari ST or something with micro switches in. So one of those will be mounted inside for each arm to operate the lower arm. So I think the functions are going to be um, back and forward is going to operate the mechatronic elbow, left and right should turn the wrist and fire is going to grip and the other fire button is going to be for weapon systems so we're going to have sort of guns and missiles and things that pop out of the forearms. So um, I need to make the forearm for scale, um, then I should know roughly what I can do with the body, how it fits together and how big I need to build the arm frame. Yeah, I think that's about the right scale. So that's the forearm and then a really big hand. That's the hand plate, so a really big hand would be in there. 
So I think I've got kind of the scale right for the arms there. I'm just going to have a bit of a look, uh, maybe add this leg panel on so we can see where that comes to and how high it comes. And also think about where my real arm is and the sort of seam and also around the back and how that fits together to see that we've actually got some flexibility in the arms. Obviously you can't have it all sealed up and have the flexibility. Um, definitely I need flexible components in there like conduit and pistons which can move around and change their length. So that's going to fill in a lot of the big details there. Um, and we also need to have a little think about how the back is going to open and close. So here we are in profile, I think it looks okay. I've stuck this big box on the back there to kind of show where the back is going to come to and there'll be a back door below that that opens so you can get in. Um, I'm not convinced this chest piece is sticking out far enough given the size of the arm. I think it needs to be probably about here um, with the chest plate perfectly horizontal, uh, sorry, perfectly vertical and then uh, tapering in towards the cod plate there so the thighs don't seem to stick out as much. So I think that will need some improvement, um, although I'm happy with the kind of overall layout so I can start making those permanent pieces. Let's have a look around the back. So around the back here I've got this box which obviously will have more features on, some grills and some lights and so on. And then obviously I think what we'll have is a, a back door of some sort that opens up like the back door of a car so that you can climb inside. Um, and there's plenty of places to mechanically pull that upwards. Um, the other idea I had was to have two doors that are a bit like gullwing doors, um, which kind of go up either side like this and part in the middle, um, obviously with lots more features on. Um, I've also done some work on the thigh there just to get a size for it. Let's just grab the camera and we'll have a closer look. So we've got um, a side on the thigh. Obviously there'll be a place for a hip pod and lots more features down the thigh there, so that seems to fit quite nicely with the arm. So that's all for this time. Hopefully mocking this up in cardboard's been a bit of an insight to what the suit's going to look like when it's finished. So next time I'm going to be working on the arm structure, um, whether it's actually going to be a wooden frame, which is what I intended, or whether it's going to look more like maybe a 3D printed cage with the panels stuck on. Um, now I've put this together, I can give that some thought, which is why it's really good to mock up some stuff in cardboard, rather than just going ahead and trying to make it out of the final materials. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video for future updates on this project and other projects, and check out the social media pages in the description below. Also don't forget my Patreon crowdfunding campaign, where you can get some exclusive rewards, including access to a live broadcast with me.